This is what we've been waiting for. It's time to bring this board to life. Hey everyone, my name is Neil and this is Real Terrain Hobbies. And of course, this video is brought to you by Tabletop World. They make these incredibly realistic, highly detailed uh, fantasy medieval style buildings. If you haven't seen any of the other videos leading up to this one in this series, go check those out. And Tabletop World right now, they're still fully operational. They were a small, small five man crew and they're taking every precaution with the virus right now to keep the packages and these buildings clean and sterilized. Uh, they are still shipping out. So if you need something to do during this time, I'd highly recommend picking one of these buildings up while you still can and having an awesome, awesome project to work on and a beautiful building to paint and really make something special. All right, so it's time to get back at this board. We're really gonna bring things to life now. We're gonna add some paint to the rocks, some flocking, some dirt effects, some vegetation, and really change the look of this thing. Okay, so we've got all our colors laid out here. I've got all these are diluted with water. We're just gonna be painting the stone the same way that we've done all the painting in the past, the method that I use. Uh, that many others have used as well on the internet for these type of rock molds and that is using a diluted watered down color and you just combine the various different colors in different ways across so we're going to be going with black this is going to be our final layer that will fill in the nooks and the crannies and the cracks and bring out those shadows so we got a gray a uh, green and a brown and i'm going to be mostly using uh gray on these the brown and the green will just be so for sort of the highlights and to add the different color variants into the stone itself. So in this method, we're just gonna start with one color at a time, do as much area as we can with that color. I'm starting with brown and then move on to each various colors, ending with the black, all right, there. And so when we do this, we don't wanna completely cover with the same color. We wanna just add little splotches here and there. And we're even gonna leave some white in the stone just to get that color variation in everything. It's important to note here too that uh, as you do this, this is gonna start looking really kind of ugly, really crazy and not right at all. And that's perfectly normal. It, it turns out or it, it starts off really bad like this, <laughs> as you can see. And then even adding on the extra colors, it gets, it almost gets progressively worse. Right at the end is where things really kind of start to come together once all the colors are kind of combined. And even then, I was pretty <laughs> nervous about how this turns out. You'll see here in a second. Okay, so we're just adding in the green now on top of things, it's just splashing it on. It can be totally messy. I'm putting it mostly into the wider spots, but we're not completely covering everything up. All right, so I'm just adding in light gray here. And honestly, this didn't do too, too much for the overall look. I wanted some lighter kind of grayish uh, rock to sort of match the uh, stonework on the actual tabletop world buildings. And it didn't do too much, so I ended up using some more black here. At first it went on really dark, too dark, and I had to lighten it up a bit, or not lighten it up, I had to dilute the, the wash down some more. Uh, but it ended up turning out fine. It looked pretty scary <laughs> in the stage. But uh, after, as things get blended in, it turns out a lot better. So now it's the grout stage. And these are the four colors I'm using here. And this is what I do for the dirt. This is the base under all the flocking, all the grasses and the vegetation is applying this grout. Okay, so we are painted up with our rocks for the most part, the cliffs. I'm a little frightened actually as to how they're looking right now. I think they're gonna look okay once the ground and everything is blended in. Uh, so I'm a little nervous with that, but I'm gonna leave it for now. And we're gonna move on to adding all the ground cover now. So for that, uh, we're gonna be using the grout. So I'm getting ready to start that. I've got my watered down PVA glue right here. And I'm gonna start kind of in the farmland. And so we're gonna start with a darker uh, grout and then we're gonna move up to the lighter stuff. I'm just going straight with the grout and I'm actually using the PVA, watered down PVA first so that it permeates a little bit into the styrofoam 
and won't kind of just flake off if it gets bumped or damaged or dented kind of it'll be make it a little more durable so that's what we're going to do first and we'll see how it goes so for our grout here we've got kind of a medium brown kind of a chocolatey-ish brown a light gray which is basically just a straight cement color uh, this is called a stack this is the light brown i've used before and then sort of a charcoaly dark chocolate type of uh, color right here for this one so these are the four colors that we'll be using for this project All right, so as you saw, I first applied the watered down PVA to really make this bond well with the styrofoam below. Started off with the dark rut and worked my way to the light around the edges. And now I'm also painting up the sides of the cliffs here. And that's because we're not gonna be able to get much grout in there. So it is gonna need some paint on there just to sort of get rid of the white along the edge. I did manage to flick some grout on there and it uh, did a pretty good job. That way I did kind of the light brown or sorry, the light gray across most of the rocks with the light brown. And then the darker soils are where there's gonna be vegetation. So obviously the farmland there, kind of the grassier, wilder areas. I just went with a gray, it's not super rich soil. It'll be a lot of weeds and uh, shrubs and things that'll just sort of grow in the wild that way. And they don't need to be super, super brown. Uh, for here, I built this up. I actually could have done this with grout. I've got a lot of grout. You can get a lot of the stuff actually for quite reasonably priced anyway. I did try this Vallejo uh, ground texture here just to build up the edges a little bit and it worked out pretty well. So I've had this uh, two-part epoxy, this fast drying stuff for a little while now. I wanna say maybe four months and it has completely hardened up. Basically there is an expiry date to this stuff, which kind of sucks. Now I gotta go and buy some more. So I don't even know if it's worth it to get these big tubes or not, unless you're gonna be using all of it fairly quickly. So yes, I don't think I'll be getting these big epoxy two-part resin glues anymore just the smaller syringe style uh, so they don't go bad on me all right so we're moving on to the farmland uh, i was initially going to be using these fences from tabletop world uh, but instead i decided to make my own kind of to go with the theme of the vegetation on the terrain which you'll be seeing here in a little bit, I'm gonna be using a lot of natural products. Uh, so I went with some sticks actually uh, for the fence. These are just from, uh, I believe it's a pine tree. No, actually these are from sagebrush. These were some twigs from sagebrush that I had collected earlier. And now I'm just building up the dirt around the base with the grout to give it sort of that built up uh, look, I guess, or the land around it, maybe more trodden and more pushed down and up at the fence line, it's a little built up a bit. Uh, so I'm doing that there. Also here at the bottom of the bridge, I wanted a, a nice uh, kind of muddy section. So I put a lot of grout down and then I just drew in the tracks for the wagons, for the various wagon tracks and things like that into the grout. And man, this really, really turned out very nicely. So after I've laid the grout down in this uh, dry stage here, what I would do is wet it with a spray bottle just to get it all nice and moist. And then on top of that, we add in the watered down PVA glue. Uh, this helps by wetting it first. It helps that uh, glue to really soak in a lot better. If it's if you're trying to apply it right on dry stuff, it just sits on top. It doesn't do a good job. Use a spray bottle first, and that'll really help things along the way. All right, so we're moving on to the crop fields here, and I was really rocking my brain for a while how exactly I was going to do these. I wasn't sure if I should use the uh, Vallejo texture paste again or not. It just seemed like 
it comes out wide. It, it felt like that would be a really cumbersome way. And finally, I just decided to really take some big scoops of the grout and pile it on, wet it down, and uh, use the, um, the watered down PVA that way. And I found that to be perfect. Now here, these are from Tajimi One. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description where uh, this guy is, or where his website is to order these. So they make amazing uh, leafy tufts and flowers and all sorts of different types of tufts. So these are their crop strips, which are perfect. And uh, I really, really like the looks of these. They are, as you'll see in a little bit here, they are a little bit on the short side. So they're not very tall. So this would be like an early spring. But as things progress here, we're we end up going with more of a summer, summery kind of look and not so much spring. So if you can kind of think of them as like a smaller plant of some kind. So now we are moving on to Diorama Precipe. So they make some amazing, amazing foliage. It's very organic. I'll talk about them more in a little bit. They're from, this is from Italy, this product here. And so I'm using this to make some wheat fields. Now the problem is I only had, of this particular color, I only had one pack of these. I used them up really quickly right away here. And uh, now that I've ran out, it's sort of a half finished farmer's field. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do in the future. I don't think I'm gonna rip them out because they look awesome, but uh, I'll have to figure something out there. Maybe have them sort of half harvested. I'm not too sure yet, but they look awesome anyway. Okay, so it's time to get on with our flocking. And for this, I'm using my two go-tos, which are the Woodland Scenics Green Blend and the Woodland Scenics Earth Blend. Uh, these are two that I kind of always fall back on and blend them together, as you'll see. And if you want a link where to get these, you can go to realtrainhobbies.com and I've got these and pretty much everything else that I'm using here in that shop as well. So we're gonna start on these cliffs uh, kind of in this area here, I'm going to leave some patches kind of uh, bare and then put the flocking down on these areas as well as get some static grass. Probably not over here, but more over on that side. So there are those cliff walls and man, I think they are looking pretty good. They were looking a little scary earlier there after putting that grout on. It really blended it all together and now we're really tying it together with the flocking. So I started off with the uh, the green and then went with the lighter kind of yellowish uh, green flocking there, the earth blend. And I use the same procedure there as I did with the grout, wet it down with the spray bottle first. Otherwise, when you try to apply the wet uh, PVA glue, it just balls up and it kind of makes everything run off. If it wets, if it's wet down first, it really does a lot into helping that uh, glue absorb into everything. Now, a big, big key here with, with this grout and making things look realistic is the different shades and the different tones. So this is the lighter stuff and it goes a long way uh, to really bring out the realism. I guess this would be the more kind of dried out spots. I use this for the paths and uh, the edges kind of where there's a lot less vegetation. But uh, that's one, one key thing there to make this uh, the realism really pop out. And now here I'm just continuing onward. With the flocking, I sprayed it down again first with the water bottle and now we're adding on the glue and things are really, really coming together. All right, so we are pretty much done with the flocking now. I've got the three different colors down. Uh, we've got the yellow grass, the blended turf and the blended green. And those all add a really nice effect. I like the way they all come together, uh, but kind of generally across the board, all the grassy areas sort of still all look quite similar. And I'd like to add some variation into that. So what I do, uh, I go to that I really, really like uh, that you've seen in my previous videos here is peat moss, this stuff right here. Uh, so you just, uh, I got this right on my uh, garden area there in the backyard. Uh, we got this stuff for the back. Get this at your local gardening place. And uh, it really, really adds a lot in terms of 
kind of a, as a dirt effect as well as like under forested areas, kind of rotted leaves, rotted vegetation, things like that. It adds a ton, a ton of detail in there and I really, really love it. So I'm gonna add some of this into here now and it should really add quite a bit. So let's see what we can do. I tend to go heavier with this stuff in the forested areas rather than kind of where there's not gonna to be too, too much other vegetation, but I did end up putting it into the dirt as well using that sifter just to get the big chunks out and that peat moss really adds a lot. But now, now is the, the crazy, crazy uh, secret weapon here that's gonna add a ton of detail into this entire thing. These products are absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> They're incredible. They're, you'll see here in a sec exactly what these things are. All right, guys, we're on to the exciting stuff now. Uh, all the flocking is more or less done, the grout and all that. Pretty much there, maybe some touch-ups uh, here and there, but for the most part, that is good. Now it's time to pull out the secret weapon. So this stuff here was sent to me all the way from Italy. This is handmade foliage stuff. We've got stuff for tree canopies, for bushes, vines, tons of stuff, super realistic. Most of it is actually uh, organic materials. So it's various plants and seeds and stuff like that. So it's fairly delicate, um, but Kind of combine it's combined it's like uh sea foam so if you guys know sea foam you, uh, that's what woodland scenics uses for their fine leaf foliage for trees so i got that stuff here which is way more detailed than the woodland scenic stuff you, you can see the branch detail is different color from the actual leaves and all that so they make it the same way uh, for the tree canopies and there's a beautiful variety there so these guys are way higher than anything I've seen, higher than Woodland Scenics. You know, we thought put the bar right here, which is way high. This is gonna put it way, you can't even see my hand anymore, way, way up here. <laughs> and, uh, oh, it's gonna be nice. It's gonna really put this whole thing together. So let's not waste any more time talking and let's dive in. Yeah, so I cannot say enough about these products. They're this is just gonna put this thing on a whole other, another level, as I said. So this is actually from Italy. As I said, I got these packages uh, before this whole virus situation came about. So I've got one in the mail. I don't know if it's gonna be able to get across the border right now. And uh, he's gonna be sending in a third package after that, which is incredible. Like this stuff is so amazing. Uh, you can tell it's a family run business. The guy's name is Fabio. He's the nicest guy ever. And you can tell his love and his passion for modeling and for these products is just outstanding. Just look at the, the this shrub here that I'm making now. Uh, these He's gone out of his way to collect as many as, of these natural products as he can and to really, really make something special here. So when this whole thing blows over, we need to flood him <laughs> with sales because he's gonna be hurting, but he's made something so amazing and we, we gotta support this guy. But uh, yeah, you'll be seeing much, much more of this uh, in the future. All right, so it's time to make us some trees here. So what I'm gonna be using is the armatures from Sagebrush. I clipped these off a while ago. Uh, this is a plant that we can find out just in the country here called sagebrush. That's what these guys are. And so I've got quite a few of these here that I'm going to be dressing up with the canopy leaves, which are these guys from Diorama Precipice. So I'm taking out this one here. This is kind of has some purple lavender flowers on it. I think it would go well with this. This is a sem somewhat of a lavender tree, I guess. So um, what we're gonna be doing is using a spray adhesive. I've got the Elmer stuff. I've gotten some comments last time about Elmer's not being a very good brand. This is the only brand I can find around my area here. Uh, but if you go to my website, I'll have uh, the other brands on there in my shop uh, that are supposedly better than the Elmer's. This one seems to work fine to me. Uh, just one tip though, when you're using this stuff, after you're done, get a little cup of isopropyl alcohol and just set the nozzle in there and it won't gunk up on you and you can use it over and over. I had some complaints about people saying that 
the nozzle gunks up and then after one use it's toast. So that's what I would recommend doing. So without any more delay, let's get these guys going here and let's make some trees. All right, a quick word again on that spray. Actually, I did find it really difficult to work with and things didn't stick on well, but I reinforced it later with PVA and it was fine. All right, so we have gotten a huge, huge leap ahead on this board. I'm so happy with how far I've gotten here. Uh, man, this is, it's really coming along and I'm really excited. I was hoping for this video that I could get all the vegetation done. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be happening for this video. What I'm gonna do is split it into two and continue on with that in the next video as well as tackle this river scene with a waterfall back behind the water mill there. And it's gonna be so, so good. I'm really excited for that. All this uh, stuff from Diorama Precipe here is really gonna bring this board to life. Like these, all this stuff is just so, so incredible and I'm so excited for that. I managed to get two trees done. We're gonna probably do another uh, three, four, five of these. Really excited how these turned out. I mean, they just look so good, so awesome. So more of those trees coming as well as everything, all the uh, vegetation stuff. And yeah, I'm excited for that. And uh, so we're gonna do some glamour shots right away here to show all that we've gotten completed. If you wanna support the channel, head over to my Patreon. Uh, those guys have been huge in helping me to continue doing this. I've been really working hard to get more of these videos out on a regular basis. To do that, I need time. And to get time, I need support. So your support over there on Patreon would be is, is huge into helping me put more time into this and uh, get away from my day job a little bit to really, really make this channel come to life. If you wanna sign up and you haven't already signed up for the Tabletop World Stables, the big giveaway, head over to my website, www.realterrainhobbies.com and on the homepage there, you can see exactly how to sign up and get entered into the draw to win those stables. If you are a patron member, you get extra entries in there depending on your tier level. So win-win there. And also my shop is on there too. The Real Terrain Hobbies uh, Amazon shop with a ton, a ton of stuff in there for getting started on your hobby or continuing the hobby and building up your arsenal of tools and materials and supplies. And yeah, I put a ton of work into that. Check that out, it's awesome. Stay tuned, we're gonna get this next one out really quickly here. I'm plugging away, hammering these videos out and I'm excited for this river and excited for how everything's turning out. So take a look at these shots and I'll be seeing you guys on the next one.